lights out at Good Things 2018, but we're joined today by the, the lovely bird. How's it going, man? Good. How are you guys? Yeah, I'm it's, been a, it's been a good day. You guys are recently on stage as well. How was the, how was the show? Fantastic. Beautiful to see so many excited people about a rock show getting excited about something so real. I think rock and roll is coming back hard. It is, it's coming back. It's a good a, feeling. Yeah, it's coming back in a big way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's the, the end of good things, as I said before. How's the, how's the festival run? Has there been any bands that sort of call you by surprise? Tonight Alive always catches me by surprise. Their positivity and energy are a great band. But these three shows, I'd have to say, have felt like what a summer festival run should feel like. Like 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 everything that's great about the warp tour, but in a beautiful place in Australia. <laughs> yeah, it is nice. And yesterday we played like 10 minutes from where I live. My two daughters got to come out. It was awesome. Yeah, we did I met an Australian and when we decided to have children, we thought why not raise them in the, in the same environment that she grew up in, which is just trauma free, no drama, beautiful, beautiful life. So does that mean you're a, a little bit more, I guess, used to the heat? We've had a lot of international bands come in and say that the Melbourne show was the hottest show they've ever played. Was that sort of Today weird? was hotter, man. The sun was right in our face. But those are the ones you remember. Those are the ones that are like, yes, I feel like I really worked out there. Like I, yeah. I, I killed myself. I could have puked on stage. Those are the ones I love. Yeah, a little bit acclimated, I think. Living here, you have to become acclimated. You do. It's getting so, hotter and hotter, man. When are we going to see 50 degrees? Yeah, we, we don't have winter in Australia. It's just, it's nice. But I like that. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful weather. Um, now, the canyon below drop last year is sort of the most recent work for you guys, in many ways. It's, it's quite a personal album, lyrically. Is it, is it ever sort of difficult for you to sort of put all those emotions down for the, for the wider public to see? This, I, I think in, a, in this in this particular example, yes. But it was a conscious decision to kind of take all the heartache and the, and the grief, everything that I was going through at the moment, and maybe almost like a art, art experiment yeah. to see if I can use a record to actually grieve the loss of a friend. And, yeah, there's, I, I think I've, I felt very uncomfortable when it came out. Um, those feelings, after I let it go, those, those feelings kind of went away too. But for what it's worth, a lot of people have come up to me and said, hey, I just lost a good friend of mine, and this record has really helped me through some really long yeah. time. So for what it's worth, it was worth it. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess you could say that's sort of the, the power that music has to connect people, no matter what. Right. There's a. I think that what's cool about music is there's so many different types of music that fit in with so many different types of places in your life. So many different colors. So many different types of emotions. So many different um, moments and movements. But the use has always been a very philosophically heavy band. We like to think about the biggest questions that you can possibly be asked about the human condition. Why? Why are we here? What does it mean? What does it mean to be happy? What does it mean to be sad? And I think that there's a, there's a bunch of bands like us that we are for uh, we're for a different moment than in the club. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, you're an avid reader as well. But, uh, sort of any of the books you read ever influence your writing? And sort of what authors do you do really sort of inspire you? Um, 100%. Yeah. Every. Everything I do influences my writing, and that's what's so cool about art is you can only, if it's honest, you can only present yourself in that moment. So each record could be a, a snapshot of, of the band as they are in that moment, which I think is really cool. But yeah, um, huge influence, huge, huge, hugely influenced by Shakespeare. Um, Thomas Pynchon is probably my favorite 
author. He wrote this insane book called Gravity's Rainbow. I love this uh, author, David Foster Wallace, rest in peace. He wrote this book, Infinite Jest. Um, I like a lot of old classics as well. I still read um, trash books as well. I try to read anything. I don't have social media, so I've got a lot of time for books. I was just thinking about it today. I've never really read a book that I hated, that I like despise. I've read a lot of books that I don't like, but I, but I, I see there's parts about the book that I did like because stories are, and that's just what songs are too. I mean, I'm just taking it a little bit further, but yeah, what a cool thing. Get lost in a book. And you're not done in Australia yet. Cycles continuing. You're going to Canberra very soon. One last show. We're really yeah. stoked. Um, a little punk rock show. Yeah, being sort of a, I guess, a local now. Is there any spots you like to get up while you are traveling down the east coast? Uh, we're we're pretty obsessed with Byron Bay in that area, and since we've made a bunch of friends and a bunch of bands that live there, it's really awesome. Uh, we we get up there quite a bit. But even the hinterlands around there, the surrounding areas, are so lovely and peaceful. I mean, yeah. Have you ever heard of Crystal Castle? It's in Molumbimbi. It's like the largest collection of natural crystals in Australia, but it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Maybe it's a Crystal Palace. No, 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 I think it's the Crystal Castle. Somebody will let me know. We'll put it in the comments. Um, we'll jump onto some what we like to call shit questions. Yeah. Just for a bit of fun. So I pick a number shit. between questions. 1 and 13. 13. 13. Would you rather be a babe, a member of Baby Metal or Dropkick Murphys? Baby Metal. Is that a drink? Fair enough. Uh, another number? Uh, one. One. Go All right. Up. This one will be interesting. If you had to delete one song from your current set list, what would it be and why? We had to delete all that I've got just because we didn't have enough time. <laughs> But we played it the first show. It's really tough to pick from such a large catalog. It's, it's crazy. Not, not, never, never cutting a song because we don't like it. It's, more just that force. it's pretty cool to say that I, I actually enjoy playing all the other stuff. There's not one song that I'm like. Yeah. Awesome, man. And uh, the Canyon dropped last year, leading into 2019. What can use fans expect to see? We will be in the studio in March, so we will have new music out by next Australian summer. There you go, you've heard it here. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. Oh, yeah. Right on, man.